Well, hi there. Let's face it, lizards are awesome. But picking the perfect lizard for you, that can be challenging. You may be here because you saw our video, the top five reptiles for beginners. If not, it's right there. Or because you saw our, our video, five of the best pet lizards you could possibly get. We stand behind every one of the lizards on those lists because quite frankly, they're some of the best pet lizards on earth. But planet earth is a big place and it is full of awesome lizards. Those were, in this video, five of the best pet lizards you could possibly get, but there are a heck of a lot more than five great ones. And so we give you five more of the best pet lizards you could possibly get. Like before, we are assuming that you are not a brand new reptile keeper. That's actually what our beginner video is for. And this means that the lizards we're gonna cover don't need to be super easy to find. They don't need to be super inexpensive. In fact, some of them will be quite expensive but worth every penny. And they don't need to be quite as easy, though in general, we do like for them to be lizards that are fairly hardy because if they're really, really difficult just to keep alive, that actually cuts into the enjoyment of keeping a pet lizard to some degree. First on our list is the Euromastix, which is absolutely one of the most awesome lizards on planet Earth. Just a stinking rad lizard, so wild looking. And that's definitely one of the pros of the Euromastix. What a cool looking lizard. And they're very soft for most of their body. And then they got this tail that looks like it's some sort of a medieval weapon. They're also like the perfect size for a lizard, big enough that they can handle, not roughness, but regular handling without worrying about breaking them. But at the same time, they're small enough that they're not difficult to handle. Uh, they're not gonna scratch you up and tear you up. And, and also their temperament is fantastic. They're, they're not inclined to bite. They don't scratch on purpose except just to hold on to you. They don't usually use this tail to whip with, though they can do that if you like harass them in the middle of the night. They might kind of whip it at you a little bit, but it's never going to hurt you. They're fantastic for handling. As you know, something that I find very important is that they don't drop their tails. You know how much I hate it when a lizard drops its tail and these guys can't do it. They also need a very reasonably sized enclosure. That's not to say a small enclosure by any any means, but it's not going to be a whole room in your house, and that's definitely a pro. They're tough as nails. They come from one of the harshest environments on Earth, the deserts of Africa and the Middle East. They're pretty sturdy lizards, one of the sturdiest lizards you can find as long as you've got them set up right. They need few, if any, live feeders. A lot of species and a lot of individual Euromastics won't take them if you offer them to them, so for the most part they're just eating leaves and seeds, and that's very nice. But they're not perfect. No animal's perfect. And so they do have some cons. And one of those, and one of the biggest ones for these guys, is they need a very hot light source, which means they need a lot or large light bulbs and lamps, and they also need UVB lighting. So this is the most expensive lighting you're gonna need for anything you need for your mastics. They also need a relatively constant supply of fresh veggies, which don't stay good very long, so you're going to need to go to the grocery store on a regular basis to feed your Euromastics appropriately. And, and this is a minor con, but a lot of different species are available, which really is a pro, but at the same time, the care can vary somewhat between the species, so you need to be aware of what species you have and how their care v differs from the other species of Euromastics. However, if these cons are not a big deal for you, and the pros that we listed are good pros, the Euromastix might be the perfect pet lizard for you. Next on our list is actually the smallest lizard on this list, and this is a Cuban false chameleon, also known as a bearded anole. So you'll probably hear me saying both, because both are just common names for this awesome lizard. There are a lot of pros to this lizard. One of them is that their size, while not tiny, is small enough that everything else about them is pretty reasonable in size. This means that their enclosure, while it shouldn't be small, is much smaller than what you'd need for a lot of the much bigger lizards. Also, they're going to eat a lot less than a much bigger lizard. Just having everything on a smaller scale is definitely a pro. They're also extremely mellow. They're very, very calm, easy to handle. 
Uh, very unlike most chameleons, actually. And these guys aren't chameleons. We called them false chameleons for a reason. These are actually a species of a knoll. And they, even if you're not interacting with them on a regular basis, they remain very calm, very unlikely to bite. They just are very, very pleasant little beasts, and I love them. They frankly have most of the awesomeness of true chameleons without most of the drawbacks. A lot of chameleons can be very fragile, prone to dying. Uh, they are also fairly angry creatures. They do not like to be handled or interacted with. These guys do not have that bad temperament that most chameleons do have, and they're also much hardier than most of the true chameleons, which awesome but they've got the independently moving eyes like chameleons they change color like chameleons they even feed very much like chameleons they don't shoot their tongue out like a chameleon as far they kind of lunge with their whole body but they do lead with their tongue which is kind of this like purple blue color just super rad animals they're also easy to breed and they breed on a very different scale than do chameleons chameleons do kind of a live fast die young uh strategy to life Female chameleons start laying eggs when they're fairly young and they crash and die. And they will do this even if they never encounter a male in their lives. So that's a downside to any sort of female chameleons. These guys are a little bit more measured in their reproductive strategy. Like all anoles, they lay one egg at a time. They can do this maybe more than once a month, but generally they lay one egg a month and it's very easy to breed them. And not very many people know about them, so they're actually fairly available and fairly reasonably priced for an animal that's this cool and this rare. They're not perfect. No lizard's perfect. They do have some cons. One of them is their small size. I said before that's a pro, and it is a pro in a lot of ways, but it also means that they're more fragile than are a lot of bigger lizards. You wouldn't want to hand them over to a small child, for example, because they could potentially harm the lizard very much, very quickly. Uh, you don't want to drop it or accidentally smash it in any sort of way probably obvious, but it's definitely something to be aware of. They probably can drop this tail. Most anoles can. I've never seen it come up with these guys, but not that many people keep them either, so I haven't had that many opportunities to see it get dropped. That may be a con. It might also be a pro, though, because I don't think it's really something you need to worry about. They probably also should be handled relatively sparingly. Like I said, they're very mellow with handling, but you don't want to stress them out. They don't stress as easily as do true chameleons, but I would keep handling sessions somewhat shorter. I wouldn't keep them out as long as you might keep out, say, a bearded dragon or a ball python, something like this. They're going to need less of the expensive lighting than are the other lizards that we've talked about on this list, but they still need it. They need the UVB lighting, and they're going to need basking spot lights, so that's expensive. Less expensive than the other lizards on this list, but something they still need. They eat insects, which is great. I mean, sometimes it's a pain, but they don't eat that many of them. Uh, Dubia roaches, crickets, these kinds of things are great. But what they really like to eat are snails. That's, that's their staple diet in the wild, and snails can be a pain to get a hold of just because, well, wild snails can carry all kinds of diseases, parasites, and you don't want to have wild snails. There are prepared diets that you can get uh, also you could breed your own snails, but you're going to want to breed them for a few generations before they're going to be safe to feed to them. So getting snails is a pain. That's really a bigger deal for babies. Some babies are really only going to want to eat snails. By the time they're adults, if you've raised them on other insects, they're going to do a lot better. But sometimes, if it's a baby, they need to be assist-fed insects because they just don't recognize that as a food source. And that's definitely a con. This lizard overall, though, Probably the easiest lizard on this whole list. It's one of the best pet lizards for beginners that we have talked about on any of these lists. So, you know, most of the lizards on this list, like I said, are for intermediate and advanced keepers. This one, if you can find one, a beginner keeper who does their homework could keep bearded anoles very, very successfully because they're stinking rad and one of the best pet lizards on earth. Next on our list is the Australian water dragon. You might be thinking this looks a little bit like a Chinese water dragon, but they're actually not very closely related at all, and that's a very good thing. They have a lot of pros to them. One of them is this size. You may know already by now that I love lizards this size. I think they're just the perfect size. They're big enough so that they're solid. You don't have to be super worried about harming them with regular handling, but 
they're not so big that they need an absolutely immense enclosure that they need tons and tons to eat they're just I think the perfect size lizard these are also very active alert fun lizards to watch they're gonna spend a lot of time in the water and up on land they have a really aggressive feeding response kind of almost like a monitor lizard feeding response and that is a lot of fun that's a really enjoyable thing about owning some lizards and these are definitely one of those lizards they're handleable they're not prone to dropping their tails in fact uh, you're not going to believe me entirely because he does actually have a regrown tail. They can lose it, and that's not a perfect thing, but they're not going to drop it just willy-nilly. Uh, you'd probably have to have it get broken off or pulled off, and so just don't do that, and you should be in good shape. They're also just really cool looking. Uh, not only are they very unique because you've probably never met somebody who has Australian water dragons, but it's just a super cool look. They got all these spikes on top. They got this, like black war paint on their face, the, the mask that they've got, just incredible colors. The closer you get to them, the cooler they look. They got spines all over the place, not just on their back, but also all over their tails, all over their back legs. One of the coolest looking lizards ever. And then a lot of the day, they're going to spend swimming around like a crocodile. How much cooler does it get than that? Oh, look, look at this red belly. Look at this red belly on him. The males are going to be considerably bigger. So if you think that uh, this water dragon is too big, and he'll get a little bigger than this, but if you think that a male is too big, the females stay a little bit smaller, and so depending on the sex of your specific water dragon, that might have a lot to do with how great of a pet it is for you. Uh, something else I love about them is, unless you live in Australia, and even probably there, if you get one, it's almost certainly going to be captive bred. And captive bred is just better, and so you're guaranteed with Australian water dragons, they're going to be captive bred. And that gives people an incentive to be breeding them in captivity because they're not having to compete with people bringing in imports. Love that. Of course, they're not perfect. They do have some cons to them. One of them is that they eat a lot of insects. In addition to insects, they, they eat things like fruits, some vegetables, but most of their diet is probably going to come from insects. And at a, a lizard this size and as active as this is, it's going to be quite a few insects. They're going to be expensive and difficult to find, unless you live in Australia. That could change everything. But outside of Australia, there aren't that many people breeding them, and so it's difficult to find one, and when you do, it's going to be pricey, but worth it. The enclosure that they need, I said earlier it doesn't need to be immense, but being this big, it does need to be fairly large, and it needs to have a large water area in addition to a land area. They're going to need good basking lights, that, that means they're going to need heat bulbs, but they're also going to need UVB bulbs, and those are kind of expensive and need to be changed fairly regularly. Because they have a big water area, they're probably going to need some sort of filtration in there, so that's going to cost extra, maybe make a little bit of noise. In a nutshell, for a lizard this size, they're going to be expensive, but they're not going to be ridiculously expensive. That's just sort of the only real con to them. Love the Australian water dragon. Possibly the best pet lizard on planet Earth. Next on our list is one of, honestly, the most underappreciated lizards out there, and that is the jeweled lacerta. These are incredible lizards that come from the Mediterranean region of Southern Europe, and they are just out of this world incredible. I love them. So many pros about them. For starters, look at the size of this lizard. They get about two feet long, but you can tell a lot of that is tail. And, and that would be for a male. Females are going to be a little bit smaller than that. Such a gloriously beautiful lizard. Because of this reasonable size, the enclosure that you'll need for one is a reasonable size. They are an active lizard, so it needs to be big for a smaller lizard, but it's still a smaller lizard, so it's not going to be the enclosure you need for, say, a savanna monitor or tegu or something like that. And that's marvelous. They also have a really great temperament, generally speaking. I mean, they can be a little bit shy, but they're generally not very inclined to bite, though they could bite hard if they wanted to. These guys eat snails in the wild, so they can bite hard if they want to, but they're not super inclined to bite you. They don't really scratch, they don't really tail whip. Mostly they're just going to try to hide from you, or maybe run away, and that's not that big a deal. These guys are honestly probably the closest thing you're going to find to a tegu in a reasonably sized package. And I'm not saying as far as relatedness, because whiptails and amoebas are more closely related to tegus, but they don't act like tegus. These guys act so much like a tegu in a reasonable package. And the tegu personality 
You can't beat that. It's the best personality any lizard has. And the only downside to a tegu, also a, a pro of the tegu, is the fact that they're huge. These guys, not huge. This is the perfect size for a lizard. They're very, very fun to feed, like a tiny tegu. They've got a really aggressive feeding response, and they attack hard, shake things, awesome, super fun to feed, which is one of the best parts of having a reptile. They're also fairly easy to feed because they're an omnivore. Now, at the same time, they need a wide variety of things, and that can be a little bit of a pain to get, but there are a whole lot of different things that they will eat, and they should be fed, and that's really handy. And they're so beautiful. This one is not even fully fired up right now, and it's got all these yellows and blacks and various shades of blue and teal. Incredible looking lizard. Very few lizards on the planet come anywhere close to this. Collared lizards actually probably have the most similar coloration of any lizard I've seen, but this might even put most collared lizards to shame, and that's saying a lot. There are some cons. No reptile is perfect for everyone. Their humidity needs to be spot on, more so than most reptiles. If it gets too high, they've got this really soft skin, but they're kind of prone to skin infections. And if it gets too low, they can have issues like respiratory infections. And so you need to keep that, that humidity in a fairly narrow range, and that is a pain. They also, like many diurnal lizards, need fairly expensive UV lighting. Though their basking lights, uh, their temperature that they need is very, very reasonable, but they do need UV lighting, and you know that's expensive. They need fresh veggies and a diversity of other fresh feeders, fresh insects, even snails if you can get them, and that can be expensive and difficult to procure. And they need these on a regular basis. You're going to be feeding these guys pretty much daily because they are a very active lizard and they like to eat a lot. Awesome forked tongue, how did I not mention that in the pros? So cool, tiny tegu. Definitely a con is the fact that they hide a lot. And so that means that if you have one, even though they're super duper beautiful, a lot of the time you won't be able to find it. And if you want to get it out, it means you're gonna have to dig it out, and sometimes they don't like that. And so you're not gonna see it all the time, and that's definitely a major con. And a con, always a con when they can do this, they can drop this tail. I don't get the idea they're overly inclined to do so. I haven't actually seen that many jeweled lacertas. I've never seen one that has dropped its tail, but they do have the, the capacity to do that, and I never like that in a lizard. Last of all, this is a big con. They're hard to find because they're underappreciated, and because they're underappreciated, I mean, if more people knew about these, they'd be super appreciated, but they are not well known and not very many people keep them, and it's hard to find good care information on them. There aren't very many reputable care sheets, not that many people talking about them, because not that many people know they even exist. However, if you can deal with these cons, if you can find out what you need to know to take care of it properly, which is really not that hard, one of the best pet lizards you could possibly have, incredible, jeweled lacerta, love it. And last, but certainly not least, is the caiman lizard. Let's start with the pros. Um, this looks like a crocodile and uh, tegu had some sort of a wizard cross and this came out. One of the coolest lizards in the world. It doesn't get any better than that. For starters, they have really impressive size. This, this one, this is Thorn, and he's not even fully grown quite yet. They, they get actually really similar in size to like an Argentine tegu, which is a really great size for a big lizard. But, and we'll talk about this in the cons, being a big lizard does have its share of difficulties associated with it. I love though, I love that size. They can, and this is gonna sound like a con at first, so hear me out, they can bite really hard. Like tegus, they've got very, very, very powerful jaws, but they're snail eaters, and so their, their jaws, their teeth, Everything is built mostly for crushing and not so much for, like, cutting your skin. And so it'll bite hard, but it's not very likely to do the same kind of damage that a tegu or an iguana or a monitor lizard might do. Like that. Also, because they're snail eaters, they tend to be gentle feeders. Uh, tegus, for example, have a very, very aggressive feeding response. A lot of large lizards do. And you don't want to get on the bad end of that feeding response when it comes at you. When you're a snail eater, you don't need to run and attack stuff because it's not going anywhere. And they're very lackadaisical about feeding, and that's kind of a pleasant thing with a giant lizard with powerful jaws coming after you. They also, and you know how important this is to me, 
do not tend to drop their tails. It seems like there's some evidence out there that they may be able to do it, but not something that you're going to have an issue with with your Cayman Lizard. They use it for swimming so much that dropping it would be a major, major sacrifice. And let's just face it, they're absolutely one of the coolest, most unusual and amazing lizards in the world. I mean, short of having a crocodile, nothing looks more like a crocodile than this. But they are not perfect. No lizard is perfect. They've all got some cons associated with them. Uh, one of the biggest cons with these guys is that they're semi-aquatic. And that's actually really cool because you can watch them swim underwater. If you've got glass where you can see under the water. If not, that they swim like a crocodile. They just fold their little legs into the side and just paddle along with their tail. Incredible. But that means you've got to keep an enormous aquarium in addition to an enormous lizard and that is really challenging, so that's a major con. They're big, so in addition to having a big area to swim, the whole enclosure needs to be really big. And they're still gonna need expensive lighting in that enclosure, so because they're so large, they're gonna need a very large basking area, not concentrated all in one spot that could burn them. So it's gonna be lots of big heat bulbs and UVB bulbs, which don't project very far, so you might need a lot of those. It's expensive, let's just put it this way. The enclosure for these guys is expensive and high maintenance. They also prefer to eat snails, which is fantastic if you've got a ready source of edible snails, but if you don't, that's a really, really hard thing. There are uh, snails that you can buy as a, a prepared diet for reptiles, so that is something you could potentially order in. Uh, also, a lot of like Asian food stores often carry snails. You don't want to be using snails from your garden, even the land snails are the best just because they can carry a lot of parasites, so you need to be very, very careful about where you get your snails. They're extremely difficult to find captive bred. Most of them that you can, you can purchase are actually farm raised, which is good because it's not depleting wild populations, but at the same time, they're still going to come with a heavy parasite load, they're still going to be imported from other countries, and they're going to come emaciated and dehydrated a lot of them will just crash and die within the first few months. And this is an extremely expensive lizard, not to mention just a tragedy to lose your lizard. So there's a major con. However, every now and then captive bred are available. There are people who periodically have success breeding them. If you can get one of those, well, your life is now complete. Overall, definitely some pros and cons, but there's no denying the caiman lizard is one of the coolest, if not the best, pet lizards on planet Earth. There are so many cool lizards out there, uh, and tons of them, honestly, tons of them make just incredible pet lizards. We've now covered, well, quite a few. Any of them on this list or on our last list of the best pet lizards you could possibly get, honestly, could be the greatest pet lizard in the world for you. As always, like and subscribe. We're going to be coming out with videos for each and every one of the lizards on this list and so definitely click that little bell so you get a notification when those videos come out i mean you don't want to miss the cayman lizard video and we hope to see you real soon and action <laughs> <laughs> whoa he didn't like that that's too much well hi there for him sorry thorn i didn't mean to do that to you buddy are you okay i'm gonna go well hi there and i don't want to freak you out I'm gonna do the well hi there again. Are you ready for this? I'll do a dry run. Well hi there. What'd you think? You ready? Alright, let's do it. They're very, very calm. <laughs> I should probably re-say that. <laughs> oh look at that. You checking me out, buddy? Are you I'm kidding? Look at this lizard! It's pretty chill, man. Yeah. He's not gonna have any bloopers though if he just keeps hanging out with me That's like true. this. I'll have to get him latched onto my face at some point. <laughs> That's what we pray for that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're wonderful. You're just a perfect loser. This is not good for me, though. This is this is the kind of thing where I go home and buy one. <laughs> but look at the colors on this beast. But he can fire up and be brighter than this. Define fire up. So a lot of times, based on how warm they are or how excited they are, their colors will get more vibrant. And... This guy is fired down right now because he's cold. Curses! I mean, how could anybody not love that face? <laughs>